welcome back to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm your host, Lydia Patel. And as always, I have a very special guest for you, Grandmaster Kang. If you love martial arts, if you're into Taekwondo, definitely tonight's episode is going to be for you. So keep it right here. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm your host, Lydia Patel. And like I said, Taekwondo, martial arts, we have a lot in store for you. And I want to introduce to you my very special guest, Grandmaster Kang. Welcome to Beyond Focus TV. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, it's not every day that we have a martial artist on the program. Okay. We have different things. You have different <coughs> artists, authors, designers. Taekwondo, martial arts, a big thing, especially here in New York. A lot of people are into it. Um, kind of goes in ups and downs. It has periods, I think, like a new Jackie Chan movie would come out and everyone's into it again. And then it will lull back a little bit. But it's never died out. No, I don't think martial arts has ever died out. And, never. Uh, I think Taekwondo, just the popularity, you know, just globally has just, probably in the last few decades, probably one of the fastest growing martial arts. Absolutely. Now, for those who have no real knowledge of martial arts in the different sectors. There's karate, there's jiu-jitsu, there's taekwondo. Why don't you share a little bit what sets each one apart and what's different and unique to taekwondo? So taekwondo, <coughs> the original roots go back a couple of thousand years and uh, it was really known as a style of foot fighting. So the original name was taekwondo. But then um, under the Japanese occupation for like almost 40 years, the Koreans couldn't really practice that style so they kind of you know you can never destroy you know a culture so people practice it but not in public oh. and then when the Japanese occupation ended the modern Taekwondo as we know it came into being so it's more you know again after the Japanese occupation which is uh, like 1945 and afterwards okay and every if you look at the Eastern um, society, the culture, like Taekwondo, again, is is kind of a, a kicking style with some emphasis on hands versus like karate, this Japanese form, which is probably just the other way, probably more hands, less kicking, and then you have a Chinese style, probably the most popular form is Kung Fu, which is more of a softer uh, style, so it's like everybody, you know, has their origin, but I would say those three countries is the, really the birthplace of martial arts mm -hmm. as we know it. Absolutely. And then film, popular books and television programs has led this to really get where you are today with the school and people wanting to learn about that. So let's shed light on the school. So the, the school's um, popularity, I mean, it goes, it's, I'm not going to say it's all my doing because I do have a family history. Uh, I learned from my dad, who set up the first Taekwondo studio in Brooklyn in 1969. And then in 1984, when he kind of wanted to, had a different vi vision, he wasn't really into the running of the school aspect, I, I saw an opportunity and I took it over in 1984. And then since then, I've grown into uh, four schools mm -hmm. and also two university clubs. Now, being one of the first ones in Brooklyn, Talk about some of the challenges of that. Brooklyn, late 60s, very different <laughs> from the Brooklyn it is today. Absolutely. And pe because people say, you know, why why did your dad open up a school in uh, Brooklyn? So what happened is the gentleman that he knew, there were colleagues in Korea, they started the same Taekwondo studio, uh, sponsored him to come here. So when he came here, out of respect, he couldn't open up a school in Manhattan where the gentleman's school was. So he figured... Let me be at a safe distance where, you know, we can still be friends and we can still do our business. So he Respect. opened up basically, yes, all the way at the end of Brooklyn. Something that you don't get nowadays. That's why we ended up in Brooklyn. So it's uh, Good place. back in, yeah, <laughs> not bad. I mean, that's, that's why I got a little bit of that accent, you know. No, but it's, it's fantastic, you know, to 
bring it back to the roots where you said, and that's a key word that he mentioned, the respect out of his buddy, his good friend who helped bring him here. A lot of people. All right, well, <laughs> I'm here now. Bye. This day and age, there is very little bit of that. It's, I mean, if somebody hears you doing well, they'll be under the studio right next door, right next door. I would say right now, my main uh, studio in downtown Manhattan in Tribeca, I would say within a five-block radius, there's got to be six, seven martial arts studios. Really? Oh, absolutely. It's because if, if they know somebody's doing well, they're going to all kind of Can't punch up. And, right oh, there. yes, yes, yes. So late 60s, you open up the school, you started with one location. And like I said, very, very different Brooklyn. How was your father getting the message out there and really getting students, really trying to build that art form when it wasn't really as ethnic, as urban, as known as it is today? Yeah, so back then, we didn't even call it Taekwondo. We called it Korean Karate. Oh, wow, that's pretty Because Karate... You know, because of the Japanese influence, already had a name. Yes. So we used to use the terminology Korean karate. I don't know if you ever heard of that. So that's we used that for probably many, maybe good, good twenty years or so. You know. Try to associate with something that people could at exactly, least and then people would ask, to. "What is the difference?" And then, of course, we would explain that it's more of a kicking style versus hands. And then, with the popularity of Taekwondo getting into the Olympics mm -hmm. in '88. We didn't really need to use that term anymore. We used the term Taekwondo. But, I mean, the way it was back, like you were saying, how it was different, believe it or not, even as much as it was a long time ago with the Bruce Lee movies, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, that whole era, everybody wanted to learn martial arts. Yeah. And it's I mean, at its peak. Yeah. It's pe and, and you know what it was peak with? It Everybody looks at martial arts now as a kid's activity. It's very popular with kids. It was grown-ups. Oh, you yeah. seldom had classes where kids were under 10 years old. Mostly it was all teens and grown-ups. So very different than what we are accustomed to seeing now. Right now, if you walk by a martial arts studio, especially a Taekwondo studio, it's, it's probably predominantly kids. Yeah. Very different back then. I, I don't really hear much adults. Hmm. saying but they're going to go do a Taekwondo class or any form of martial arts. It's usually, I see five-year-olds doing... Yes, you are right. You have your yellow belt. You have your... My nephew did karate and different things for a long time, and you really do see that... They, they, I think they do it mostly for discipline. Yes. For the I disciplinary act Discipline, uh, the focus, and confidence. Because... I mean, confidence is, 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 is an element that we all talk about, and people don't really understand how martial arts can give you confidence. Everybody thinks, like, they're going to learn how to fight and beat up other kids, and I try to tell them it's the other way. They learn to fight where they don't need to go out there and show that they can fight because they're so confident with them themselves that they don't need to show off, and yeah. that's how they stay out of trouble. But that's not the confidence factor I think really ties in with martial arts. Well, we'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to go into more details about the school. You have a great book that's actually out, just launched, and of course, if you want to pick up this cover, all that is coming up next. Stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, sitting here with Grandmaster Ken. Great interview, giving us a lot of information. Um, hope the people at home are enjoying this, and by the end of the program, know where they could sign up, take some classes, get to enjoy themselves, and really learn some discipline, art form, focus, like you were saying. Um, right now, you've got four locations. Right? Yes, yes. Where are the four schools uh, located? So my main studio is in downtown Manhattan, in uh, Tribeca, and then in Brooklyn, I have three studios. 
One's in Canarsie, one's in um, Marine Park area, and one's in Sheepshead Bay area. Okay. So, so pretty much South Brooklyn. Yes. Yes. For the most part. Yeah, we try to kind of keep it close because mm-hmm. we all like to work with each other. No, yeah. that's great. Um, and what's the schedule of the classes? Uh, most schedules are after after the, um, the kids' school hours because predominantly now it's very popular with kids. But we are probably one of the few schools, I, I would say definitely in the New York area, if not even larger, where we have regular adult classes daily, like two, three adult classes. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah, not like, so we'll have like maybe five, six kids' classes, but we'll also have a couple of adult classes. We have a huge following. Let's talk about some myths because... I always let people know which guest I'm going to have on, take some questions. How old is too old? That's one of the questions that we oh, get. Oh, to, to start a martial arts? Yes. I would say it's never too old. I mean, because peop- the terminology art, you know, everybody thinks, I guess, from the way they see things on television, on the movies, you know, they think it's all about fighting. When we teach that it's really not all about fighting. Mm-hmm. It's about trying to be your personal best. So when you want to be thinking in that role, you have to have your mind, you know, adapt to, uh, to that understanding. So it's not just all physical. If it was all physical, you're right. I mean, by the time you're probably 30, 40 years old, that's it. But the fact that it's an art, the learning never stops because the brain never stops learning. Mm-hmm. So I would say that when I do a quick, uh, st- you know, statistics of my grown-up students, most of my students are in their 50s. Oh, okay. Most of my adult students are in their 50s. But the crowd that I have kind of limit, you know, limit on is a young, like, teenagers. Yeah. It's, it's disappointing because I think they're the ones that need that focus and need that that mental, you know, maturity in a way. Mm-hmm. But you know, parents will start them very young, have them there, and then they'll reach this teenage, and they don't want to do anything. Yeah. And then, of course, some of them will pick it up again later in life. But uh, it's never, there's no, I, I don't think there's any age restriction. Okay, good. No, because a couple of people are like, how old is too old? Good. And I'm like, yeah, I think as long as you're physically able. Exactly. Exactly. To do it, not to harm yourself, of course. But also the exercises that you do, like when you're, when you're practicing certain moves, it really helps you as you're aging with your focus. So, I mean, now we're talking about, like, you know, Alzheimer's and all these mm-hmm. other issues. The fact is that that happens because you're not using your brain too much. If you do exercise, like reading, for example, or, you know, writing, or something like martial arts, it will keep your brain working, yeah. which will slow the process. Again, I'm not an expert in that. Of but course, I, and, and I some people are genetically people. prone, so you can't, yes. but you can delay it. Yes, absolutely. I, I mean, I believe that you are in charge. That's the way it happens. Certain things, you're right, you, you cannot predict, but generally speaking, I think you can take care of your health. Yeah. Very good. Mass media. Mass media has a big influence, that's, and that's how I open up the show, saying, you know, it depends. There's a new movie, something you'll see a little peak in how many people may register just because and the movie is out or it's, it's back in style, and then we see eight system, MMA, and oh, Muay Thai. And so many so things. Many. So <laughs> many. Too many. Too many. So, I mean, people will ask me, how do I decide, right? That's probably a very common question that, you know, I all the time. And I always go, it's never the style. Like, I chose Taekwondo because that's the family I happen to grow up in. So God forbid I did a different style, right? I don't think my father would be too happy about that. But I think any martial arts is great. Not good. I think any martial arts is great. The problem is the qualifications of the instructor. This is the problem. Because I think there's... As, as much as as great instructors, I think there's also a lot of people that are not really qualified to teach, mm-hmm. but that are out there because martial arts is not really a regulated industry. Yeah. So the fact that happens, you know, you'll get, you'll get guys coming in 
I mean, they do something for two, three years, and they're out there teaching. You know, so they that. sometimes you can get certified. It's like fitness instructors. You can get certified, and the next thing you know, you're training people. It's 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 almost scary in some ways, but I mean, I for a fact know there's plenty of incredible instructors out there in all different disciplines of martial arts, and the key is to find finding that right person, because then it doesn't really matter what style you're learning because you will adapt to it because the instructor will make it exciting. I mean, it's like saying somebody's got a doctorate in, you know, mechanical engineering, somebody's got a doctorate in philosophy. Oh, that guy, you know, one must be boring or whatever. Not true. I mean, somebody must have showed them a way saying, this is a great field, get into it. So I think the teacher makes the big difference. I think the martial arts itself, when you look at it, even as big as it is, it's a small industry when you take the true masters and you sit them, sit them down, I guarantee you they will all be thinking in the same wavelength. Absolutely. It makes a lot of sense. How do you select your instructors? That's you have four <coughs> schools. You have yeah, staffing that's, to them. That's the most interesting thing about my studios. They're all homegrown. Yeah, so when I tell people that, they're like, what do you mean? I said, these people came to me as beginners. And they climbed up, you know, taking all the tests up to black belt and then beyond black belts. You know, I mean, most of them, my, my, my least senior staff has 20 years of experience under me. Oh, wow. Up to 37 years. They, so they started with me since I was a kid, mm -hmm. a lot of them, and they're still there. And now they're running my studios. So I, I think that's what makes my studios very unique because I think very few schools, you will see that. Usually, they're higher that. in all like any every other industry, but incredible to say that. I mean, all these years, my all my staff members started with me from day one. So, I mean, <clears throat> some of them years back, I used to take them to Disney. I had a vacation home down in Orlando. I would take groups down with me. I mean, when they were kids, you know. So they, I I kind of saw them grow up. Now they, you know, grown men. I mean, it's like. They got kids of their own, so it's a whole different story. That's but, interesting. So. Home, I like that fact, and you you can basically attest for yourself how good they are. Yeah, they. I mean, I don't want to say too loud, but sometimes, in some cases, they're even better than family. <laughs> you know, family has its own issues, but we all have the same philosophy, and there's so much respect even between us just knowing each other for so many years. That's amazing. An incredible environment. I love it. Stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. We'll be right back. watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, sitting here with Grandmaster Kang, a great martial artist. And guess what? This book is just came out just over a month ago. Yes. Um, where can we pick up this book? What it, let's talk about the book and what it's really focusing on. is Black Belt Fitness for Life. Black Belt Fitness for Life. What does that really mean? So um, this book uh, took a few years in the making. Um, originally, the company asked me to do a, just a traditional Taekwondo book. And I said, you know, a lot of people are very intimidated with martial arts. They, they hear the word martial arts and they start punching, kicking, and that's not for me type of thing. So I asked them, what, you know, what would it take if I can create a, like a well, you know, like a well fitness, well being book? Mm -hmm. Something about a lifestyle versus just fighting. So they agreed. What I did is I incorporated a few different things. The first thing was I kind of explained the philosophy of um, some of the exercise that we do and how it can be incorporated into just a regular day, you know, daily function. Okay. So some of the martial arts, especially in Taekwondo, we do a lot of stretching. And I think the problem is as we age, our bodies age, and 
when you say age, what do we lose? Okay, people say you lose muscle tone and all these things. Really, you lose flexibility. You lose elasticity. Yeah, yeah like and then when you lose that, that's how you hurt yourself. If you're bending down and you're trying to pick up something and you slip a disc, you hear these things all the time, it's because the flexibility decreases. So I incorporate some of the Taekwondo exercises that we do to keep that, mm -hmm. keep that working, the flexibility part. And far as the black belt fitness for life, the way I put it that way is because it's, you know, there's so many programs out there that are pushing you to get these quick results. Like, you know, 30 days, 60 days, you know, lose 20 pounds, lose 30 pounds, you know, get the six pack, you know, you know look incredible. And my thing is, okay, let's say you can do that. Let's say you can do that in, let's say, 60 days or 90 days. My thing is, what happens after? So it's this always. is the, yeah, so the key is, can you maintain that rhythm? Impossible. You look at all the professional athletes in any field. You know, that's why off-season, they get out of shape, you know, and I then they have to the do pre-training, spring training, whatever. And then they start getting them back into it because to train at that intensity, first of all, it's not healthy. Yeah. Because you're definitely going to hurt, you know, wind up hurting yourself severely. But it's no way you can sustain that type of training for the rest of your life. So this book is to give you the confidence to say, hey, I can do this for the rest of my life. You know? So it's more, it's not a, a quick fix book. It's not like 60 days, you do this, or as I put it, in seven weeks you're going to get this ultimate body. In seven weeks, your mind and your body will be set to take you for the, for the rest of your life. It's different. It's a different concept. Do you incorporate meals and eating, how to change all that? Because we all know it's 80% nutrition and 20% fitness. Yes. For but, weight loss, at least. But I don't, you know, I don't really push weight loss that much. Now you're probably saying, how is that? When you ask somebody... Like, oh, you're going to, you know, you're going to lose weight, right? So what are you going to start doing? The first thing they'll go, I'm going to eat less. And I usually think, well, that's not a good sign. What I would do, and the, what I would encourage them to do, is start exercising first. Because once you start exercising and you start feeling good about yourself, you will change your nutrition. Because, you know, you walk, let's say you did one hour of exercise, either walking and some weights and some stretching, you're not going to, after that, have a big meal. You're going to be like, you know, wow, I just put myself through some, some good work out here. I don't know if I want to put that stuff back into my body. Maybe I'll just, maybe I'll be a little bit more cautious. And what will happen with each day that goes on, you will, your mind will get stronger and say, oh, I'm definitely not going to eat that. Oh, I'm, I'm going to skip dessert. I'm not going to have that soda. And that's what's going to happen. So I don't like to use the word dieting because I don't think that's the proper approach because that means you're going to be dieting for the rest of your life. Well, it's going to be a pretty boring life. It you know? doesn't work anyway. The key is to understand, to eat a, a well-balanced meal. That's the key. I mean, like myself, for the last 35 years, I'm the same height and the same weight. I will Ow. never transition more than two, three pounds. I might sometimes do something a little bit extreme. You know, people in the fitness industry might say, wow, that's crazy. But... Let's say I had a weekend of heavy eating. Soon as I'm, you know, the next day starts, for a day or two, I might almost cut the eating in yeah. half. Because the key thing is to take care of it immediately. Because if you prolong that for a week, that's five pounds. Two weeks could be another five. So the key thing is to immediately get to it, take care of it immediately, and then your body will adjust again. But I'm not a big fan of dieting, I'm, but I'm a big fan of portion controlling. Yes. And that's something I, I really stress in the book, how to portion yourself. Try to eat your larger meals earlier. As you go out through the day, decrease your meals where by the evening time, it's nothing more than a snack for dinner. Yeah, that's how so I try So just kind of reversing the cycle because the way we think is have, you know, go Light. from small, right, then gradually increase where... At the end of the day, when you're having dinner, you just want to, like, sit down and Jeez. you're gone, right? <laughs> you know, you can't move afterwards. So kind of reversing that whole s psychology. Absolutely. Where can we get in contact with you before we run out of time? How do we get in contact with the school? What's so the Facebook? The all that best thing is uh, our website. Uh, the website is T 
my first initial and then my last name K-A-N-G T-K-D that stands for Taekwondo.com um, if you go on the site you will see the first of all history of our school which is something that I think makes so again make our school very unique and then you will see all my locations my four different locations in the metropolitan area I hope that this interview you know can really kind of open people's eyes to martial arts training because it really is a lot of fun you know. It is. It is. I'm reading about it. Um, maybe we might get me in for a class and we have to film it. Um, That'll be dynamite. That'll we'll be we'll see what we could finagle our way into. Um, long time I haven't done a class, so um, <laughs> to have Grandmaster. It's with never me. too late. It's never too late. That's what we're saying. You know, it's you're never too old. I was kind of checking. <laughs> well, Grandmaster, thank you so thank much. Thank you. I'm really honored for having me here. Thank you. You're very welcome. You. And if anyone at home wants to get in contact, the information will be on our website as well we'll have all that for you if you have any questions or comments you can send us an email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com I'm your host Lydia Patel thank you so much for joining us and as always we'll be back again next week same time same place you're watching Beyond Focus TV stay with us Beyond Focus TV show wants and needs your feedback did we blunder? please let us know so we can improve was the show helpful to you? drop us a note so we can share the success with our staff members is there something you think we could do better? We welcome new ideas and new approaches to old ideas. Do you have a great suggestion? Let us know and we'll work on it. If you would like to share your comments anonymously, please send us an email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com. If you want to get in touch with the executive producer directly, send him an email at gene at beyondfocusmedia.com. We really look forward to hearing from you.